We care about the health, safety and well-being of all our employees. And there is nothing more important to us than making sure you go home safe and healthy every single day. We invest heavily in the training and competence of our workforce. And during your first few weeks, a training program will be created for you. In the meantime, this induction presentation will provide some initial guidance around best health and safety practices. We want everyone to go home safely every day, and we do this by minimizing the risk of accidents through our risk assessment process. We will start this health, safety and well-being section, exploring what you can do to keep yourself safe when faced with the most common risks in our business. Our industry presents us with many hazards, such as driving, working in tunnels, excavation work, loading plant, working near machinery, amongst many others. It is vital, therefore, to risk assess your work. Risk assessments require the operating environment to be analysed, to identify risks, and is a key part of helping us keep ourselves and our environment safe. It allows us to make informed decisions, to eliminate or minimise any risk of harm to those who may be affected. A risk assessment forms part of a safe system of works, which we will cover in greater detail within this induction and as part of your onboarding training. You will be fully supported by your line manager in the initial days and throughout your time at Clancy in understanding and operating in line with these safe systems of work. You have a legal duty to undertake risk assessments and to control, to the best you can, the hazards presented in our work. Remember that risks can change for lots of different reasons. These changes could include the weather, traffic conditions, working near schools or shops, a busier road, or even work not being as per the method statement or job you were given. If you are required to do something you feel is too dangerous or the risks haven't been assessed, please do not start the work and speak to your supervisor or line manager. We are a business with various types of work, utilities, major projects, plant operations and traffic management. Depending on your role, you will encounter different types of risks in your working day. Some of the key health, safety and well-being risks in our business include damages to underground services, excavations, signing, lighting and guarding, personal safety, slips, trips and falls, manual handling, plant and vehicle movement, working at height, fire, the environment and your mental health and well-being. Let's look at these 11 topics in a little more detail. Number 1. Service damage. Reducing service strikes is a key focus in the business. We believe there is more we can do collectively to drive the number of damaged services down. We also know the root causes, which include not using a cat and jenny correctly, breaking ground directly above a known service, starting work without sufficient information, and failing to stop and plan before undertaking the works. We have a strict service avoidance policy, and we ask you to take all the precautions you can in preventing damage to services and preventing harm to yourself and others. If relevant to your role, you will receive training on how to use a cat and jenny to assist in the tracing and locating of utilities underground. Cat and Jenny data will be collected via Bluetooth using an app on your device or downloaded from the cat. Used with utility drawings and safe digging techniques together will reduce the risk of injury whilst excavating. It is vital these are used before and during excavation and services are marked clearly before we dig. Remember, if you don't have all the information you need in order to carry out work safely, please. Don't start the works and speak to your line manager. 2. Excavations A range of excavations are undertaken throughout our operations every day. If you are involved with any excavation work, before excavating you must follow a safe system of work. This will include completing an on-site risk assessment of the area, having and following a method statement, having the relevant completed permits, completed check sheets and a full set of clear utility drawings. 
In some cases, the excavations may be deep or have a risk of being unstable. Therefore, additional protection may be required, such as sheeting or trench boxes. This is called temporary works. In these cases, you will require additional training before commencing any works in deep excavations. Here is an example of a permit to dig form. Permits to work are issued when we must put in place tighter controls around the system of work, as there still remains a risk resulting in the need for a greater level of control. Dependent on the contract you work within, the permits and check sheets could include permit to work in the vicinity of a high-pressure pipeline, an excavation and breaking ground checklist, and a permit to dig for the work. You will be required to complete a permit to dig before digging. This is your final check to ensure all the activities you are undertaking have been gone through thoroughly to make sure you keep safe. Next, we'll look at an excavation and breaking ground checklist. This is a simple check completed by the repair and maintenance teams to make sure that before breaking ground you have noted the names of all the team members and their roles, all the utility drawings and they are in date. You have traced the routes of services clearly. You have an appropriate system of work, whether trial holes are required, and if a machine is being used to excavate, it prompts you to ensure there is a banksman or traffic marshal present. This must be completed before any excavation starts. All forms, permits, method statements and checklists are available on One Clancy, our company intranet, and in your van pack. Some of these forms may be electronic as part of the works management system, completed on a tablet. You will be issued with a van pack either in paper format or digital, depending on your place of work. In these packs, you will find the majority of the documents you will need to be able to undertake your work safely and in line with Clancy procedures. It is important that instructions are clearly understood at the start of every day to ensure you work safely and avoid any unnecessary incident. If you have any queries, contact your line manager. 3. Signing, Lighting and Guarding when working near or in the highway, there must be at least one operative on site whose qualifications match the activities being undertaken, and that the appropriate signing, lighting and guarding is in place. The signs, and where applicable lighting, barriers and cones on site are to protect you, others around you and people in vehicles. Where necessary, temporary traffic lights will be set up, again to protect you and the public. You will be given access to a red book which needs to be regularly referred to to ensure compliance with the new Roads and Street Works Act. We also have a temporary traffic management risk assessment. This will be completed where traffic management is required. The completed risk assessment will be issued to the Clancy Traffic Management Department. Your supervisor will provide further guidance if this is required. 4. Personal Safety in this section, we are going to look at the responsibility you have in taking reasonable care of your own health and safety. It's so important that you take care of yourself and use all the equipment and guidance and support on offer. Here are some reasons you need to protect yourself. Gloves. Gloves can protect your hands from cuts, scrapes and punctures, as well as infection from contaminated ground or water. Vibrating tools. Some of the work we do exposes people to hand-arm vibration through the use of vibrating tools. We have processes in place to reduce this risk, which we will look at shortly. Silica. If you are in an area where you could be exposed to silica, asbestos or any general dust, without an adequate fitted mask, you may suffer short or long-term harm to your lungs. If relevant to your role, you will receive a face fit test and issued with appropriate face protection as part of your induction. For your protection, it is important that you are clean shaven to ensure a tight seal on your mask. Hearing protection should always start with noise control. It is necessary to be aware of noise and protect yourself from it. You will be issued with hearing protection and need to wear it properly. Try to move away from the noisy environment for short periods where possible. 
look after your hearing protection and report any problems. Our company policy includes a mandatory 5-point PPE requirement. Hard hat, high visibility clothing, eye protection, gloves, steel toe cap boots. There may be need for other specialist equipment if you are working in a confined space, cutting, working around asbestos, digging in and around underground utilities, or using a piece of equipment or the safe system of work dictates. The work we do exposes people in certain roles to vibration from using vibration tools, which, if not managed, increases the risk of developing occupational diseases such as hand and arm vibration and carpal tunnel syndrome. Vibration to the hands can cause what we know as white finger. Damage to the blood vessels can reduce the circulation to your fingers and cause serious harm and inconvenience in later life. We don't want anyone to put themselves at unnecessary risk. As a business, we provide health surveillance to all operatives. We are improving how you can record trigger times using our Total Mobile app to allow us to monitor your exposure. This is to make sure you are not exposing yourself to unnecessary risk. We're also reviewing equipment and vibration levels to find the best tools available. What we need from you is to record your usage of vibrating tools every single day using our Total Mobile app. It is important that you inform your supervisor if you are feeling any symptoms in your fingers, hands or arms, such as tingling or numbness. 5. Slips, Trips and Falls Slips, trips and falls is the area where we have some of our largest number of accidents, with root causes including not wearing the correct footwear, exiting the rear of a van forward-facing and not using handles, untidy depots, work areas, or taking shortcuts. Most of these are behavioural and avoidable with a bit of planning and good housekeeping. 6. Manual handling. Another area that needs focus is manual handling. A significant proportion of all workplace injuries is caused by poor manual handling practices. Clancy has controls in place to minimise the risk of injury from manual handling, and you will receive full training during your onboarding period. In the meantime, the video you are about to watch will introduce you to manual handling safe practices in the workplace. Manual handling is an activity that includes pushing, pulling, carrying, lifting, or putting down a load. It's common for many people to spend a quarter of their day engaged in this type of activity, and since the activities are so familiar, it can be difficult to know when you are at risk of harm. Working on site is not a weightlifting or endurance competition. It's important that you don't overstretch yourself on manual handling. The resulting injuries to your back or musculoskeletal system could easily be severe. They can also occur with little warning. Even a minor injury could seriously limit your ability to work and enjoy the rest of your life. The most effective defense against manual handling injuries is planning. Effective planning is about assessing the risks of the work to be carried out, minimizing repetitive, tiring work, and instead maximizing the use of tools and automated processes. If lifting is unavoidable, it's essential you practice good technique to minimize the physical impact on your body. Bend with your knees, get a good grip, and lift with your legs. Injuries from manual handling are avoidable. They are not an acceptable expectation of your duty. 7. Plant and vehicle movement. When working in our depots or on site, you need to ensure you have clear exclusion zones and traffic management plans which separate people and plant vehicles. Exclusion zones around mechanical plant and machinery must be established, maintained and briefed out to everyone on site. 
Vehicle and pedestrian segregation are key to ensuring that works are carried out without risk to safety. When you are driving a plant vehicle, you must use a trained traffic marshal or banksman when reversing the vehicle or operating an excavator. No reversing is permitted without a marshal or banksman. 8. Working at height Another key risk in our business is working at height. Working at height examples include working from a ladder or platform, on the bed of a vehicle, or working in or around an excavation. Take a sensible approach when considering precautions for work at height. Make sure controls have been assessed to reduce the chance of an injury. 9. Fire Fire is preventable, and by understanding fire, you can begin to reduce the risks of a fire starting. There are several significant hazards that you should consider, which include smoking, electrical faults, hot works, gases and flammable liquids, or arson. The level of risk will be dependent on several factors, but main risks include housekeeping, storage of chemicals, clear fire procedures, management controls, hot work permits, electrical testing, and maintenance of fire equipment and premises. You will receive full fire awareness training, but in the meantime, here are some key bits of information. In the event of a fire on site, you should raise the alarm and contact the emergency services. The area should be evacuated to a place of safety. Site emergency procedures outlined in your health and safety plan must be put into action. In the event of a fire in a vehicle, park away from other vehicles and property where possible. Turn the ignition off. Abandon the vehicle and contact emergency services. All Clancy plant and work vehicles, excluding cars, are fitted with a 2kg ABC dry powder extinguisher. Vehicles carrying dangerous goods require additional extinguishers. Only use fire extinguishers if you are trained to use them. In the event of a fire at a depot, please follow the following. Raise the alarm and contact the emergency services. Evacuate the building and go to the designated area. A fire marshal will clear the building and liaise with emergency services on their arrival. And remember, in any situation with a fire, do not put yourself in a position of harm and ensure you maintain an escape route. Do not re-enter a building, location or vehicle until you have been told to do so by the emergency services or a fire marshal. Do not smoke in the designated muster point. 10. The Environment In addition to our safety, we must consider the environment that our work can have an effect on. These include trees and plant life, animals, lakes, rivers, streams or groundwater, archaeology, air pollution or noise. When working, consider those around you the noise, smoke or dust you can create. Reducing our carbon footprint is very important to Clancy, and vehicle usage, fuel spillages, hazardous liquids or incorrect storage of waste could all have an impact that we can easily reduce. Make sure you know when disposing of any waste where it should be stored, such as metals or asbestos. Your site must have segregated waste areas for all these and your supervisor or line manager will provide further guidance on this during your onboarding period. And the last risk, number 11, is mental health and well-being. Your health and well-being is important to us. There are lots of things in place to support you, as we believe that everyone has the basic right to come to work, do a day's work and go home to their families each and every evening without harm to their physical or mental health. The following resources are here for anyone who is suffering. These include speaking to your line manager, contacting a mental health first aider. List of names and phone numbers are on One Clancy, our company intranet. Use the confidential employee assistance program. This can be accessed via the One Clancy website. There is also information about the Lighthouse Construction Industry Charity, which is another source of support.
A card will be posted to you called a Danny card, which provides access information to the EAP and the Lighthouse charity. The Clancy Cares site on One Clancy provides a lot more information on the support we provide if you require it. Both services have an app which will be on your device. They both provide a lot of useful information on a whole range of topics related to your health and well-being. We really hope you never have an accident in the workplace. Some of the main causes why we have an accident or incident are because we are doing something we are not trained to do. We may be not following work instructions. It could be trying to make do with unsafe, faulty or incorrect equipment. Sometimes it is a lack of experience in a particular task, not wearing the correct PPE. We sometimes don't consider the strain our body is under. Lifting or repeatedly twisting or turning in a restricted space. Or we could simply not be focused on what we are doing. Try and be aware of these things. And again, speak to your supervisor or line manager if you have any concerns in the tasks you are doing. If you have been involved in any safety or driving incident or accident, we need to know immediately. Whether it's an accident to you or to a colleague, such as a fall, damage to underground services, a vehicle incident, something affecting the environment, or a near miss, we need to know. We have a system called Sphera. All incidents are reported on here, so we have an up-to-date record of what's happened. This helps us understand the key issues and risks. All accidents and incidents are investigated to allow us to understand what has happened, which helps us to communicate learnings and implement changes to prevent further occurrences. Near miss reporting is important when trying to reduce accidents as we can implement controls before an accident occurs. It is not a bad thing to report a near miss. This helps us understand what we can do to make things safer for you and your work colleagues in the future. If relevant to your role, you will be issued an IAMS card. The IAMS plant mobilisation system has been developed to reduce the risk of unqualified personnel using operated plant and machinery. If you operate plant machinery as part of your role, you will be issued with one of these cards once a formal qualification check has been conducted. Clancy has a strict policy where no employee or contractor can allow anyone else to use their IAM card. As a new starter, it is really important that we have copies of all your previous training history, so we can keep an accurate record of all your qualifications and arrange when they need to be renewed. Having training doesn't guarantee competence, but it is a start. You will either shadow someone or be assessed in your early months, so we can look at how and what we need to do to help you grow within Clancy. Here are some final thoughts. Everyone is responsible for safety on site and that of others. Never deviate from the work instruction. These should be agreed before you start work. If there is any aspect of the work you are unsure of or feel is unsafe, consult your line manager or safety advisor. Always challenge unsafe acts or unsafe behaviours. Do not walk by something that could cause harm or does not look right. If you can put it right, do so. If not, report this to your line manager. Further health and safety training will be delivered to you soon. If you have any specific questions relating to any of the subjects, please discuss with your facilitator, your supervisor or manager.